Welcome to Nursing School Explained and this video on intake and output or sometimes how we always refer to it as I's and O's, I and O's. So for intake, we, it's very important that we count everything that enters the patient's body, so any fluids. So that'll be anything that the patient can ingest and think about this as being by mouth. So that's any kind of fluids and soups juices, popsicles, jello, and even ice. So anything that the patient consumes by mouth is included in the intake. And then all fluids that the patient takes in apart from the GI tract. So that will be any kind of IV maintenance fluids, IV piggybacks, any kind of bladder irrigation, any tube feedings, as well as any flushes that we might have. And flushes can be from the tube feedings or from the IV flushes, especially if the patient has a central venous access device that requires a flush of um, 10 milliliters usually per port. So that could add up over time. Now on the other side, we have the output. So the output includes all excretion that the patient is having. And usually we think about urine and stool. Um, so urine here and any watery stool. So form stool does not need to be recorded here. That usually just goes in the bowel movement category, but vomit, for example, and then any output from any drains, tubes, any fluid that gets aspirated, so think about any paracentesis or thoracentesis, for example, and then any kind of dressings. And patients at high output or with high output from dressings can be those with burns. And then in that case, since we can't really measure it, we need to weigh the dressing to determine how much that uh, equivalents in milliliters. And all I's and O's are always measured in milliliters, which is also important that in case you work in an area where things are um, recorded also by the uh, imperial system, that you know the conversion from ounces and fluid ounces to milliliters, which is very, very important. And then after we've accumulated the I's and O's, which is usually over a 24 hour period, we can see if the patient is in fluid balance. Did the intake as much as they output or is there an imbalance? And if there is an imbalance, is the patient in fluid volume deficit, meaning dehydrated, or are they in fluid volume excess or overload? And there are some case scenarios where we actually want to pull fluids off the patient or give them more fluids than they excrete, but that depends on the specific patient scenario. Thanks for watching this video on I's and O's. I also have a couple other videos that'll go into a little bit more detail on how to measure it and what to pay attention to. Thanks for watching and see you soon.